That was way less epic than I was hoping for. <laughs> okay, that was the epic I was more hoping for. They really should make you take a test and acquire a license before driving one of these things. Sorry, I was having trouble seeing you. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Positive Amputee. My name is Amanda Marie and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my tumor surgery and the last four days of post-op. A quick thank you to everybody who subscribed and liked and tuned into the last video is beyond appreciated. I was overwhelmed by the positive feedback and support and I just wanna say thank you. The next week of my life basically felt like Pandora's box. I'm the type of person who I love checklists, I love checking things off checklists Every time I tried to check one of these things off, it just felt like more things kept unraveling and it was really starting to stress me out. It just, at some point, felt like a really big joke. And by that I mean my life. I decided I have to just trust the universe, which basically became my mantra, and things started to eventually get done. One thing I was super nervous about, oddly enough, was sleeping through my alarm. I set up about 14 of them to go off between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. And the reason I was just super nervous about this is because I legit for my previous surgery console, I had actually slept through my alarm. I had to be at the hospital for six o'clock in the morning, which means I had to leave my house at 4 a.m. I was up, I could barely sleep at all, so I got up at two o'clock. I went through my normal routine that I do every day, but I really took the time to appreciate it and give some extra gratitude. And normally what I do when I wake up is I immediately smile and say good morning to everything around me. I spend time cuddling my dogs and walking through all the things I appreciate as well as all the things that I want to come to me. I talk as if they're already here and that I already appreciated them. I spent extra time that morning just going through visualizing the doctor him being super happy and telling me positive things. I'll just imagine me coming home, which means that the surgery went well too. My friend picked me up, she was even early, so by the time we even made it to the hospital, we were like well in advance, like I think we were an hour early. It gave me plenty of time to just relax in the car with them. The friends that drove me are big, sarcastic assholes, so they're my kind of friends. Not too many people can make me laugh so hard that I basically have an asthma attack, but that's the type of friends these are, and laughter is definitely the best medicine. The thing that was really different this time than any previous time in surgery is with everything going on in the world right now, I had so many questions because normally my parents just come with me and nobody was allowed in with me. And they made it clear, like label everything, including your official leg. It feels totally weird that I had to write my name on my leg. I was trying to come up with a good spot on where to write it. I ended up writing it on the top socket part as that's the thing that kind of gets replaced the most frequently. And also, I don't think that I'll be able to fit in it once I'm healing from the surgery anyways, as if I change any weight basically at all or the shape of the stump changes in any way from this, I won't be able to wear that one and they'll have to recast me. So I figured that was my best bet rather than writing it on like, you know, the part that cost $30,000. I thought it was better to write it on the one that cost like, you know, like four or $5,000. Straight up, the team at this hospital 
is super amazing. This hospital, it kind of gives me this weird nostalgic feeling to go there. I know that might sound kind of odd, but I was born a leg amputee, so going to this place just really brings back a lot of memories and times that I spent with my mom in London and going on adventures. But when I arrive, the first feeling that comes to me is actually this sense of peace and calm and like I know I'm in good hands. You know, if you're gonna go through something like this, the great part is the universe was so kind to me and gave me a bunch of attractive doctors, so thank you universe. Before we go in for surgery, everybody on the team that's going to be in the OR came out to talk to me individually. There were two anesthesiologists, two nurses, and Dr. McHotty. All of them so friendly, so amazing, so thorough. It made me feel really good. It really made me feel like I was a part of the team. I really felt confident in each of them. They basically walk you through a lot of the same questions. So I probably talked to like 10 people and answered the same thing repeatedly which is great for me, that doesn't bother me, that actually just gives me reassurance that every single person that's going to be involved is well aware. I get wheeled into the OR, I see everybody that I had already met, we start talking about the game plan of everything to go on, and the beautiful part about this is that I, if you hear me say we all the time, it's because they really make me feel like a team. So that just makes me feel really good, really confident, and like I can really trust these individuals. I've also, in advance, I did do my research and about the procedure, what it could do to leave it in or why you should take it out. I researched the TMR, I researched the doctor. I'm a huge researcher and advocate of you need to stand up for yourself when you're in the medical system. Make sure that you always feel comfortable with everything and confident. Don't be afraid to ask questions. It's your right to know those things. Sometimes it's like difficult to even know what questions to ask. I actually kept a journal which had a list of all my contacts, my allergies, vitamins, wrote down any questions, anytime I thought about it. It was just basically like my surgery journal and everything was in one location and it was just easy to keep track. The last thing I really remember is Dr. McHotty looking at me with his angel-esque eyes, reassuring me that like, we got this. The next thing I remember is Waking up kind of, but not really. And I've never had a reaction to the anesthesia before, but this time I did. I felt like I wasn't able to open my eyes, to move or do anything, but I could hear them talking about me and they were saying how I was having a difficult time coming off the anesthesia. The next thing I remember is thinking, I might puke and the only motion I could make was to just turn my head because I knew like I don't want to obviously have that back. I just heard them saying like oh no she just threw up and ran over and they were cleaning me up. I couldn't see anything. I just had that mental awareness. The next few hours were me just basically trying to push through of opening my eyes and making small motions but my nausea was horrible but they said it's completely normal there is like this equal balance of i really needed to get up and go to the bathroom and moving was just not in the books for me so something else i had never experienced before was i could actually just taste this rubber plastic taste so potently i asked the nurse if that was normal and she said, no, most people actually complain that their throat hurts from the tube that they put down your throat so that way you can keep breathing. At that moment, I didn't feel that yet and I was just so nauseous and I'm sure the taste of rubber was not making it any better. She brought me out some ginger ale to try and help. So I'm taking little sips to try and swoosh that around so I also don't 
you know, pee the bed because now Dr. McCauty is back out because he wants to tell me how the surgery went. And I would love to tell you how the surgery went, but my main focus was just not throwing up on the attractive doctor in front of me. I, it took everything in me to just lift my head and try to sit up and have a conversation. He let me know that he did take a picture of what he found. The nurses warned him that I was just super nauseous and it might not be a good idea. I was just like, nah, you bring that picture on over here. It didn't really gross me out in any way whatsoever. It was actually really cool from what I can remember. I couldn't keep my eyes open properly to like looking at the phone just made me feel even worse. What I believe he said was that the tumor did look like a neuroma and that he also removed a massive lump that was unknown but that he believes is very likely just to be very bad scar tissue from previous surgeries. They're gonna send those away and biopsy both. Obviously, fingers crossed, hoping that they it's benign. I do think he said that he could not find any viable muscle or nerves to reconnect, which if, I heard him correctly and I assume things correctly. That would mean that he was not able to do the TMR like I hoped, which would have been what they were hoping to film. I'll find out in two weeks when I do my follow-up appointment with him. I'll obviously be not so uh, drugged up <laughs> and hopefully a lot more present in the moment to be able to absorb information. He wanted to take a look at how everything was doing and wanted to explain the incision line because originally he was going to run it vertically where he believed the issue was, but then right as he was going to cut me open, he decided to actually run it horizontally through a previous incision. I pull back my little gown, to which I notice I have blood, or what I believe to be blood, all over the inside of my real leg. I'm mortified, because I think I just started my period, and in front of my Dr. McCauty. So it takes me like a hot second to realize that that is actually probably just blood stained from the actual operation. Or I didn't know if it was like Benadine, but that's a different color. This is like a bright red. So onslaught my nervousness about what was going on because I was definitely not supposed to start anything. So I was super confused what the hello was going on. From there, he explained more about the stitches. Again, I really can't remember anything beyond that. I feel like the next thing I truly remember is just needing to lay back down and close my eyes again. At this point, I'm not sure if it's the after effects of the anesthesia or his McHotty eyes. They definitely kind of have similar side effects to the anesthesia and put me out just as quickly. They brought out my belongings. But I could not like move to grab my phone. I legit had to ask them for help and I only just had to turn like this to like grab the bag and I just couldn't. Luckily, I had an amazing nurse team that was there to help me out. Like shout out to nurses. You are all so wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do. Then they were like, yeah, you can start like getting dressed and once you're able to, like you can go home. And I'm thinking like, shit, no, I can't. Right now, because I am apparently an adult, I'm not allowed to have anybody come in with me. They have someone like wheel you, they call them porters who come up, grab you after surgery, not in a creepy, weird way. Like they take your wheelchair and then they push you down to who your driver is outside. They said like, you know, a porter could be five to 20 minutes max, so text your ride. 
hour later, I had fallen asleep in my wheelchair. I was using the post they have for IVs to like, as a pillow support system for my head. All the nurses and the team were super impressed and happy about how everything went and how capable I was afterwards. They kept asking me questions like, well, how are you gonna get from point A to point B? And I was like, I don't know, I'm just going to figure it out when it happens. I've always figured out just a way to adapt and it's always made me feel like you can always just figure it out when the time comes and things will just work out, I guess. And they did. I do this great like foot shuffle thingy and it helps like because jumping um, obviously after surgery is not a good idea and not super comfortable and maybe even a tad bit painful. Hopping in general as an amputee is been not advised, it really wears down the joints in your body. I gotta keep the one leg I do have as healthy as I can. I don't know what happened, but that wheelchair nap got rid of my nausea. That is an amazing feeling, let me tell ya. And that's how surgery went. So it is Saturday evening. That's four days post-op now. I feel really great. I didn't think I'd feel this good. I didn't think I'd be in this little of pain. I do have some pain, but I am allergic to codeine. They only could give me Tremadol, and I'm just really sensitive to any drugs at all. I've just been sticking to going back and forth between Tylenol and Advil. I've been feeling mostly exhaustion to do even the basic little things like getting up, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth, eating. I kind of forgot how exhausting that part is when you're just out of post-op. I know in the next few days, I'll start to really get that level of energy back. I've had the best team since I've come home. My parents, seriously, God bless your soul. You are my angels here on earth. I could not ask for a better support system. They actually helped, they stayed home and helped take care of my two dogs. They've been here several times a day visiting and just taking care of anything that I can't really do right now. Shout out to having the best, most loving, supportive parents ever. I've had a few people come by and help me out with things and bring me like, every amazing thing. My neighbors bake me stuff. My friends, kids make me cards. I feel beyond loved and it literally, you're, I'm gonna cry because I do that a lot now since I've turned into my 30s. Huge thank you to everybody who has been able to help me in any way possible, even if it was just sending me messages. I feel really good. I am getting like a little bit of red or swellingness if I like sit up too long and I need to, I just need to elevate it. Even if I'm up for like 10 minutes, I start to feel like pressure and mm, it's a little tender. Overall, it's crazy because I can actually feel like that the tumor is out of me. I don't know how to explain it, but it's an incredibly odd sensation. For one, I haven't had one of those stabbing, deep throbbing pains from what I had had for the last like easily two years now. That is great. That feels wonderful. Like I'm already in less pain that way than I was even before the surgery, which kind of just feels crazy to say. Set up on my couch, a place to sleep. I just didn't want to risk one of the dogs, <coughs> Lucy, accidentally bumping it. As she's been known to inflict pain on me, like that time she used my eye as a launch pad and made me blind for a month, and that other time that I got stabbed in the neck with my laptop because she tripped me. She means well and loves me a lot. I don't want to take a risk <laughs> given her past history. Goal right now is for me to, to get rest. The sooner I do that, the quicker I'll heal and be able to get back to 
weight bearing again in my artificial leg. Right now, I've been told two weeks no weight bearing, but I foresee that being longer than two weeks, but who knows? I am so incredibly pumped to walk again without pain. Honestly, kind of forgot what that feeling felt like. I'm gonna be very honest and open. I literally was starting to hate being a leg amputee. I was getting frustrated with it. And I actually love being a leg amputee. I think it has brought me so many amazing opportunities and people, and it's really made me who I am today. I'm actually really grateful to be an amputee, but it got to a point where I wish I just knew what it was like to have two legs and not have to take my leg off every damn 10 seconds because of how much it's hurting me. Right now, I don't feel any of those pains. I feel like I've been doing so good. But overall, I don't know. It's like my body just made this decision after surgery that it was strong enough to help me heal. Like I can't be using any form of crutches or re relying on my rotator cuff at all. I've been doing pretty good just using my core and picturing myself being able to do those things. Miraculously, my body has just adapted and decided, you know what? We're gonna be strong enough. This entire experience, this surgery was definitely a lot different than my previous five surgeries as those were dealing with reconstructive and the overall, like, yeah, just everything about this surgery was just not like the other ones I experienced, but I did feel that having gone through the medical system all of my life, it was not as stressful because I was really aware of a lot of what things were. I think when you know that, it does really bring a sense of comfort and peace of mind because you're not left wondering about them. You do have a lot of answers already. Thank you so much to every single person who has reached out, sent me positive vibes. It means so much to me. It really does give me this sense of knowing more than ever before that I'm gonna be okay no matter what, that I got this. I feel so strong and resilient. These moments have really, they remind me of just how powerful your mind is when you just make a decision on something. We really do create our realities. I really truly believe that my energy and my positive thoughts, my visualizing, all that really does make a difference, that it will lead to positive news in a few weeks. Once I see my doctor again, I'll definitely share that information with you guys and what I find out. I do know he did take that one picture. I'm not sure if he's able to send it to me or not. I'll ask him to text me it. Um, one, so that way I can maybe share it with you guys. I think it'd be super neat to see that. And two, that way I would be able to get Dr. McCotty's number. I mean, just kidding. Kinda, maybe, nope. Thank you again for everybody that has subscribed to my channel and given a thumbs up on this video. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, know that I am sending you peace, love, and positive vibes, my friends. Bye.